a victory for the vultures. A battle is brewing between Chevron and the Amazon, and a killer iPhone app that will make you green on the go. This is Green Dig. Green Dig. Green Dig. It's May 11th, 2009, and this is Carl Burkhart counting on the top four most intriguing environmental stories of the day. And I am coming to you from Atlanta, Georgia, where I am in the headquarters of the Mother Nature Network, MNN.com. I'm actually sitting in Chuck Lavelle of the Rolling Stones office. I feel very special. The number four story, starving vultures win back their rights to eat rotting flesh. That's right, as reported by Manga Bay, there was a law in Europe that basically prevented farmers from leaving their dead livestock just laying out in the field where the vultures would normally come to eat them. BirdLife International led a plea to repeal that law because these vultures, in particular the white griffin vulture, are basically dwindling in numbers because they can't get any food. And some of these birds have been seen flying hundreds of miles looking for food. It's a real tragedy, and actually vultures provide a great service to the farmers and to the ecosystem. So last week, the vultures had their victory, and now they, environmentalists and Hitchcock fans, are all rejoicing. The number three story is Chevron versus the Amazon. For decades now, Texaco has been illegally dumping horrendously toxic contaminants into the water system in the Amazon jungle, in particular in Ecuador. And now 30,000 Ecuadorian citizens have filed a class action lawsuit against Chevron, the parent company of Texaco. They claim that these contaminants are not only damaging the ecosystem permanently, but have been linked to thousands and thousands of medical cases, including deaths, cancer, and birth defects. The whole debacle was recently aired on a 60 Minutes special, and I was just emailed by Nick Magel of Amazon Watch. He reports that Chevron has actually hired a former CNN correspondent to do a faux news story on how the oil spills are actually the fault of state-run Petro Ecuador, not Chevron. All the facts are spelled out on the Amazon Watch website. And the number two story is a killer iPhone app that can help you go green while you're on the go iPhone app maker Third Whale and Creative Citizen, the wiki for green living, have partnered together to do a new release of the Third Whale app, which you can download for your iPhone. This new green killer app brings together Third Whale's growing directory of green businesses with Creative Citizen's tips for green living. And Creative Citizen is pretty cool because it's not just a tip, it actually shows you exactly how much water and energy and carbon dioxide that you'd save if you did that action. It's still an early version. The app doesn't yet add up your impacts altogether, but just a few days ago I talked to the CEO and he said that one of the amazing things about this app is that it's open-ended. So coming soon in the fall, they're expected to have really great data for the green businesses and the green tips. And the number one story is Capitol Hill pulls the plug on coal, literally. After months of lobbying efforts by activist groups and a massive demonstration led by PowerShift in which 10,000 people marched on Capitol Hill in the snow to protest a coal power plant there, as well as another event in which 3,000 people actually blocked the gates of the Capitol power plant. On Friday, Nancy Pelosi and Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid announced that it is official. Starting this year, the plant, which currently runs on a mix of natural gas and coal, will now be officially 100% natural gas. It's a small step, but this action is being lauded by environmentalists who link the dirty emissions from the coal power plant to increased levels of asthma and other diseases. It's also a major symbolic victory, maybe even bigger than Jimmy Carter's solar panels. It's like a message to the whole world that the U.S. is actually very serious about fighting climate change. And for the freaky cool nature moment of the day, check out this amazing goblin shark. Japanese scientists are saying this shark is like a living fossil, similar to the sharks that existed in the prehistoric age. These sharks live deep at the bottom of the ocean and have been captured in fishermen's nets from time to time, but no one's ever seen one alive. It has its weird secondary projectile jaw, which lashes out from its other jaw to capture its prey, very similar to this guy. Definitely don't want to swim around with one of those guys.